This video is sponsored by Squarespace. What's going on guys, Vincent here from thecreativedojo.net. Welcome to another video. Today we're actually not doing a video tutorial, we're actually doing a mini comparison slash mini review over the common new Glow plugins for After Effects, specifically Deep Glow and Optical Glow. So you guys know that recently we did a Deep Glow review and giveaway from Plugin Everything. Basically it's a Glow plugin for After Effects. And shortly after that, Optical Glow came out as part of the VFX suite by Red Giant. And so a lot of you guys have been wondering, you know, like how does one compare to the other? Is it worth the price difference? How do I feel about them? And how do they work? How do they differ and stuff like that? How do they compare? And how do those two compare to the After Effects default glow that everyone's used to and, you know, and hates using? Um, so this video is gonna be kind of walking you guys through that. This is not gonna be a scientific test. This is not even gonna be a methodical test. This is just me kind of just winging it and showing you guys my pros and cons. I've used both um, pretty extensively for the past month or so, uh, especially Deep Glow as well. And so I'm gonna kind of show you the differences here in this video here. But again, this is not a scientific test, but basically I created this quick little cheat sheet here that I created. And basically it shows the default After Effects Glow, Deep Glow and Optical Glow. And both have been, all three have been adjusted to kind of maintain the same radius of glow as well as the intensity and threshold. So they've all been tweaked to kind of show the same approximate radius here. So you can kind of see the fall off and they're kind of tweaked to where the intensity and threshold kind of match each other. So, you know, one is not hotter than the other and so on and so forth. We are in 32 bits per channel. We are in full resolution in After Effects and all that great stuff here. Um, and so you can kind of see that the default After Effects Glow uses a Gaussian kind of approach and it kind of just blurs the shape out and uses that blur as a glow. And as you can see, the shape of the triangle here is really, you know, like crappy. Like it's not even like a triangle shape. The glow is actually like a circle here. Um, kind of same with the square here. The fall off is really, really sharp. So as you can see the edges of the glow, um, it just kind of just turns to nothing. So it's a very abrupt stop in the glow. Whereas deep glow and optical glow both use the inverse square fall off. And so the glow falls off um, based on that formula and it looks a lot more natural like in real life and the glows fall off really nicely it's not abrupt and as you can see it's more accurate so it doesn't use that really rough gaussian approach um, the glow of the triangle is actually a triangle as you see here and so they both work very similar i'm gonna tell you right off the bat in terms of speed they work about the same optical glow and deep glow are both gpu accelerated they render about the same time for me. I didn't really notice any huge differences. Um, I didn't do any render tests, but they don't feel any different to me in my opinion. And you can achieve the same looks and results with both Deep Glow and Optical Glow. So let's go and take a look here. I have a sphere here. Um, I'm using chocolate form as a texture and I'm putting it into a video copilot orb um, because you know, why not? And let's just go ahead and mess around with it. So I'm gonna go ahead and apply a Deep Glow by plugging everything, slap that on. And by default, it's pretty washed out. And I always have to adjust the threshold, like always. Um, and so when I go into the inputs here, and so basically the differences between the two, I'm not gonna talk about the default glow because everyone knows about the default glow. Um, but in deep glow, the terminology makes a lot more sense. Um, so for threshold, so we, you have the radius of the glow, which you can control. Um, you have the exposure, which is the intensity or brightness of the glow, which a lot, makes a lot more sense to me. And then of course you have the threshold. So if I adjust the threshold here, it's only going to glow the very, very bright pixels. And you notice that when I did that, it becomes from washed out, it becomes more saturated, like way more saturated than the original source here. And so way more saturated as you see here. And if you want to smooth out the threshold, the internal mapping, you can increase the threshold smooth. And that might, you know, take out some of the saturation here and kind of just smooth out the, the map it's using internally for the highlights here. And of course you have the blending modes and you have the aspect ratio of the glows. And of course you have tinting, so you can tint the glow, whatever color you want. If you don't want to use the default color of the source, um, you have some quality parameters that you can actually fine tune and set parameter values for the quality and dither the glow a little bit if you want to. And you have some source opacities and view final render modes and you can view the glow only and play around with the alpha. So that's all cool. Um, so the one thing that Deep Glow does have is that it has a cool little feature called chromatic aberration. It's pretty limited, um, but if you enable it, 
it just adds a minor chromatic aberration that makes it look just a little bit more realistic. You know, if you're viewing um, like glows through like a lens or eyeglass or, you know, your eyeballs or whatever, um, it gives it that nice little subtle chromatic aberration in here that just makes it look a lot more realistic in my opinion. Um, I could be wrong, but the nice chromatic aberration just adds a little extra touch, a more stylized look to your glows. And you have some different color modes, green and blue, red, blue, and all that great stuff here. I like to keep that red and blue and adjust it um, as needed. And it looks pretty cool. And so that's deep glow by plugging everything. Cool. Let's go ahead and hop into optical glow part of the VFX suite by Red Giant here. Slap that on. And by default, it's even more washed out than the previous one in Deep Glow. Um, I'm doing motion graphics, so usually it's under video. I'm not creating a log um, washed out motion graphics here. Um, so amount. So here's my little nitpicky stuff here. Amount, you know, like it does amount mean radius or intensity or what, who knows. Amount to me doesn't really make as much sense as exposure, but basically it's the intensity basically. And then you have the size, which, you know, size, I guess it means radius. In my opinion, radius makes more sense, but you can adjust the radius here. And then you have um, highlights only. So this is an instance where this term makes a lot more sense than threshold for beginners, I believe. Um, so highlights only, you increase that and it's only gonna glow the highlights, um, which is a lot more user friendly to understand. And as you can see, when I did that, it doesn't get as saturated as deep glow, right? In deep glow, whenever I increased that threshold, man, that thing got super saturated. And you know, that's that's not really what I kind of expect per se. Um, but in optical glow, you get more, I guess, predictable results in my opinion. So, you know, I isolate it to just the highlights and things don't get super, super saturated. But the plus is that if you want to get that saturation back, you actually have a vibrance option here. So you can increase the vibrance option and you'll get that saturation that you want. Um, so this is a plus because you can fine tune and control it and you don't have to tone it back and stuff like that. So you have the vibrance option. You can just colorize the glow. You can also choose an inner and outer tint. So that's better than deep glows um, color options there. Of course, you also have highlight roll off. So if your glows is a little bit too intense, you can actually just roll off the highlights you know, tone down the highlights there. And of course you can show the glow only, just like in deep glow, you have um, the aspect ratio of horizontal, vertical, like cool stuff. Um, instead of having parameters to adjust the quality, you have just presets. So draft, um, best, extreme, and it's just kind of like more user-friendly for um, beginners that way. Um, because, you know, who knows what all this stuff means right here unless you read the manual. And of course you have some alpha channels to play around with and you know adjust there. So basically the gist of it is both can give you very, 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 very similar results. Step optical glow doesn't have that chromatic aberration. Some of the terminology makes more sense in deep glow, but in optical glow you have more predictable results and you have some more fine options for colorizing as well as controlling the highlights and isolation and stuff like that. So one more little example here, just the same thing, just a different example. So instead of little particle strings, I have a more solid object here and we'll apply deep glow just to kind of show you what's happening. Cool, uh, maybe decrease the radius a little bit. Um, and just play around the threshold to just isolate the areas here. We're getting some really nice, you can kind of see some, you know, some funky looking things going on, but you know, if we increase the radius, maybe it'll go away, smooth out the threshold. Um, and you know, you get kind of like this result right here. Um, so pretty cool right there. Cool. Let's apply. Optical Glow here by Red Giant, slap that on. And again, we'll have to isolate just the highlights only. And, you know, we can increase the size and amount. And I just feel like here, it just looks a bit more predictable, right? Um, and increase maybe the vibrant or so. so. So with the controls of Optical Glow, I can get a really nice cleaner outlines and highlight the highlight areas and glow them um, like right here and you know, are all around and you don't get this weird spot right here. 
Um, whereas in deep glow, I kind of get this little weird spot right here. Um, and you know, I can kind of fine tune and try to isolate just the highlights and you know, do that. But I don't know, like it just seems like optical glow, I just um, play a little bit less with and get a little bit nicer results. Um, but again, you can get equal results with both. I just tend to lean towards optical glow just because it's more predictable. But you know, there's pretty much, that's kind of how deep glow and optical glow work. Now, there is a price difference, right? So if money is an issue, you don't have optical glow, you don't even have the VFX suite, you don't plan on buying the VFX suite, then deep glow is gonna be your, your best bet because it's only $50, you buy it, and they're a great company, and you know you have a Glow plugin for 50 bucks. Optical Glow is actually worth double that. So if you buy Optical Glow alone by itself, it's gonna be $99, so basically $100. So it's double the price of Deep Glow. And are you getting double the performance and double the results? Probably not. But if you're gonna buy the VFX suite anyways, you already have Optical Glow, whatever, um, then there's no reason to get Deep Glow as well. Um, they perform basically the same. The speeds are basically the same. The results are basically the same. It's just a matter of taste and um, you know a little bit more finicky. Um, but both plugins are really great. They're really fast. They work as advertised, and they both use the inverse square fall off. So there's really no huge difference between the two besides like terminology and stuff like that, and some minor, some minor additional properties. But this is pretty much kind of like a deep glow slash optical glow comparison video. You can download trial for both of them and kind of play around with them and see which one you like best or whatever one works best for your machine. Before I go, I wanna give a quick thanks to our sponsors over at Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. Squarespace is the only one platform to make an amazing website, whether it's for your store, online business, or portfolio. They have amazing things to choose from, fully customizable to make it the way you want to look like without having any coding knowledge required. They have awesome 24 hour support. And best of all, if you use the promo code DOJO at checkout, you can actually save 10% off your order and support the DOJO. So check it out over at squarespace.com slash DOJO. Squarespace, the number one place to create an amazing website. Yeah, so this is basically the comparison between Deep Glow, Optical Glow, and kind of how it compares to the crappy AE default glow. Um, you know, After Effects should really just update their glow to use inverse square falloff. I think that's the biggest thing here because duplicating glows and adjusting threshold and radius and intensity is really just a pain in the butt. Um, but again, both Deep Glow and Optical Glow are solid glow plugins. You just need one or the other, you don't need both. It work pretty much the same and um, the results look great. So check it out. If you don't already have Deep Glow or Optical Glow, definitely pick one of them up depending on your budget and all that stuff. Let me know whether or not you like Deep Glow better or Optical Glow better or you just don't even care you're happy with the After Effects Glow. Just let me know your thoughts down below in the comments. My name is Vincent Wynn from The Creative Dojo and I'll see you guys next time. Bye guys.